so today I'm gonna do something new for a blog post. We're doing a video blog post. This is my first video of me that's not a tutorial, so it's sort of exciting. Um, so what I thought would be fun, I don't know if you think it's fun or not, but we'll see. You can let me know in the comments, is to go through some of the things that I've made and I'm just gonna like talk about them. Nothing scripted. Um, I pulled my winter box of clothes. I actually have two winter boxes. So these things sit in my Ikea shelving below the TV. And when I get dressed to go outside for winter, this is what I put on. They're things that I've knitted and crocheted and I throw them in the box. Some of them I like and they stay at the top. And some of them I don't like so much and they get put at the bottom and eventually they're gonna get rocked. Don't tell them. So I'm just gonna go through the box. Um, just talk about the yarns I use, the pattern, you know, whatnot. And we'll just see how it goes. So I'm gonna start the top. Um, the top are, is the most recently finished things and the things that I like a lot. So this hat I just finished. It's called From Norway With Love. It's a really cute little hat. I, to I was in the mood for some color work and so I was just like, you know, on Ravelry looking for color work. Nothing too hard because I wanted to do it while I was watching TV, but you know, something fun. And so I found this pattern. Ugh, now my hair's going to be all messy for the rest. Okay, I found this pattern um, and it has, it works with stranding, so it's not in Tarja, so it's a little easier. And it has these really cute little hearts and I just thought it was perfect. And I used, um, I just went diving in my leftovers for um, yarn to use. So I had this, my starting spot was, get, I had some leftover from a shepherd's wool crazy. And so that's like two colors plied together. So I started with this um, blue and green crazy and that same skein had this green and gray crazy. So I went through my stash and just found these little bits of solid colors that would go along to make like a rainbow scheme. And it was super fun, I recommend the pattern. And um, the back is all stranded, which makes it really nice and warm. And I was a little nervous, um, there's nine stitches in between the longest strand, and I was really worried that my tension would be funny, um, but it turned out fine, and it's great. So, it's my hat, and I'm always looking for like a warm hat. I know this sounds ridiculous, but like, for some reason I knit a lot of hats and they're just not like warm, you know? Like you get like air pockets that go up near your ears. Um, so this one's a really good one. Now this guy, um, I made up this pattern myself. Um, it's just like, it's a circle, so it didn't take a lot of genius. But um, I dyed the yarn. This was the first time I used Kool-Aid a few years ago. And you can tell that, um, so like I do the long colorways by winding the yarn into balls and then dropping it in the Kool-Aid. Um, and I have tutorials on the blog so you can see how I do it. Well, this was the first time and the smallest ball was wound up too tight. So what was on the inside didn't get any dye soaked up in it, but it's actually really cool and speckled. Um, so this I never actually wear as a cowl. What this guy is, is, ease my headband and I wear it when I go running outside in the winter. Um, because up until I made this hat, this was the one thing that actually kept my ears warm. And you know, that's really important. And people ask me how long Kool-Aid lasts. Like I've had this for, I guess, like three or four years and the Kool-Aid color is just fine. Now granted, I don't wash it that often. I don't, people always, I don't know how often these other people are washing their hats. I wash mine like once a year. I mean, my hat doesn't get that dirty. This one more often because I run and sweat in it, but it's lasting. Oh, this hat I really like. So this, I have a lot of hats. This hat is from a pattern called Capuchin, and I got the yarn. It's a Noro, I think it's, it's either Kosheron or Eero. I always get those two really confused. It's a bulky weight, and I got it when I visited Webs for the first time, and I got this one, I was like, oh, I have to get something. So I got this one skein, and then I was looking for a really cute hat um, that's like a really, you know, like one skein sort of hat. And I like this one because it's split in the back. So when you put it on, these things make like really great ear flaps. So I like this hat. It's not a heavy duty winter hat though, because, um, you know, the flaps just dangle. And so it doesn't keep you super, super warm. But I love that hat. Oh, I shouldn't try on the hats. It makes my hair all messy. Okay, 
but it wouldn't be the same if I didn't try them on, did it? This was my first, it's my first so much. It was my first entrelock. So the pattern's Quand from Nitty. Um, and it's also my first hand spun. Well, my first hand spun that grew up to be something. Um, so I really love this. You can tie it around the back. I keep it tied all the time and then just slip it on and off because like if I tie it, I get my hair stuck in it, you know, and that, ugh, it's really annoying. So I keep it tied um, and I wear this one a lot. Um, you know, it's something you can put on like even under a hood or like if you're wearing a hooded sweatshirt or something. Um, and these are just eye cord. I think it, it was my second time doing eye cord, so I love that guy. This, see, I'm still on the ones that are on the top, so they're all my favorite ones. This is my favorite scarf. So this yarn I got from a thrift store sweater, and it's cashmere. So it's like a bulky weight cashmere that was in some sweater that I got for like $3. And I, I frogged the entire thing. And um, I forget the name of this pattern, but it's on my Ravelry page. It's something that not a lot of people have knit. There's only a few projects of it, but I think everyone should knit it. It's fabulous. So you knit it, um, well, you know, you only have, what, 20 stitches on your hook, and it's just ribbing, and you just knit it, and it keeps going and going and going, and then you come back and pick up these stitches and make the ruffle. So it's super easy, and it's so warm. like. And it always looks really fabulous. I mean, I'm not doing the best job right now, but like, you know, my coat's black and you can picture like, so I have all these really cool like little frills around my neck and I always get a lot of compliments on this guy. So I love this scarf. I highly recommend it making that one. You do need um, a long needle to pick up all these stitches, but I, um, I'm a needle shover, so I shove stitches on, and I'm pretty sure I did this on a 24 inch needle, so shove, you can do it. These are just leg warmers that I didn't make, but I've had since I was like really little, so I'll just put this there. See, this is just my winter box. It's not all things I made. This hat, I love this hat. So this hat, I origin, it's from, well, the inspiration for the hat is from the Cascade 220 book. They had like hats and things like that. Um, and it's a knitted version. So I made the knitted version for my yarn shop. And then I was like, Ugh, the bob, like you have to do this bobble and it's like knitting five stitches together and some crazy increases. And I was like, oh, that's not really that much fun. But then I thought, you know, this would be a really good hat in crochet. And so what I did was I, modified the top of the pattern to do it in a crochet bobble stitch and then I followed the pattern to do the knitted sheep and then this border is knitted and it's nice because it draws it in closer to your ears. You can tell I'm really obsessive about it being close around my ears and it has the cute little tail and so I love this sheep hat. Kind of a new pattern, well, you know, a mod on a pattern. This is a really simple little headband that I made um, with some hand spun and yeah, it's just a good little piece to throw on. Super easy. I don't even think I followed a pattern, just like knitting in the round with some ribbing. This is my cowl. This was my swap. So Sarah Wilson, the sexy knitter and I were doing the BFF swap. And so I knit one and she knit this one and then we swapped and then I haven't knit my other half yet. Shh, don't say anything. But this half is really great and I keep it. It's made with um, Spud & Chloe Sweater, which is a really nice yarn. It's a wool cotton blend, um, and it comes in really great colors. Oh, the box gets so exciting! Okay, this guy I just made, I call it my gnome hat because it has this little point. Um, it's some random, I think, Angora-ish blend yarn that I had in my stash that someone gave to me didn't have a label on it um, and I just wanted something easy to do and then I got this little point at the top which I think is really cute by doing one decrease round and then one plain round and keep that going and that's what gives this really cute little point and it's fuzzy and I haven't worn it a lot yet because it just um, got off the needles like a week or two ago but he's really cute now this now we're getting we're stuck we're starting to get into the controversial stuff. This is gorgeous, okay? I'm not gonna let anyone, you know, 
think otherwise. This is really, really gorgeous. Um, it's called the Pineapple Doily Shawl. I love the pineapple pattern. So if you don't know this, that shape, like, you know, that thing, is called a pineapple. It's used a lot in doilies, and I absolutely, like, am obsessed with it. So I crocheted this Pineapple Doily Shawl. It's from an alpaca. It's Kramer's Alpaca Lace that I held double thickness. I think I used a G-hook. So it's beautiful. The problem is like, is that how you wear it? I don't know. Um, I mean, it's certainly really great like when you're holding it up and around and everyone's always very impressed. Um, but in terms of like wearing it, I mean, I guess it could be like cape style. Um, I never end up wearing it. Okay, that's the truth. Um, I like it a lot, but this is one guy that doesn't get worn too often. <sighs> that's how it goes sometimes. He's not getting frogged though. I like him enough to keep. This is a really great scarf. So this yarn is from Space Cadet Creations and that's Stephanie, my bud Stephanie, and it's called the Claudia Scarf. It's a pattern I got from Ravelry and this is one skein and it's really perfect just like going out wearing a normal scarf. I really love it. And it was a really nice shell pattern, like worked up really well and the colors I think in the hand dyed yarn work really nicely. So I really love this scarf and this is like, it's not super heavy weight, it's a fingering. Um, so I wear it like spring, fall, that sort of time. Not right now in the depths of winter I go with my thicker scarf. But I love this one. I'm trying to be orderly, so I'm folding them roughly in between putting them back in this pile. Oh, it's like the Space Cadet Hour. Okay, so this hat is also Steph Space Cadet Stephanie's, and it's called the Rockabini. I love this hat. So I think we'll get to another one I tried to make that I actually messed up, but this one I did right. Um, so it's really cute. I think it's cuter if you have your hair out a little bit, um, but it's really nice. It's a fingering weight yarn lightweight like perfect fall hat love that hat this okay so this is a wingspan you may have heard of a wingspan it looks like that um, this is my own hand spun so exciting so I borrowed a spinning wheel from a friend and I was like okay I'm just gonna see if I like spinning on a wheel and I got um what's it called roving you know that stuff from Frab Just Fibers. She has a rainbow roving. Um, and this is another one that doesn't look as cute when you're wearing it as it does like if you just nailed it to your wall. But anyway, I do wear it. Um, it's a really soft merino and I spun, my intent was to spin um, two plies and ply them together. But when I had finished spinning them on the wheel, I didn't put enough twist in them to ply them well, so I actually made two things out of my rainbow spinning. Um, and the end result is I think I don't like wheel spinning enough to get a wheel, but I'm really happy to have tried it. So that's my wingspan. This is clap OT. Okay, so we all know the clap OT. I love knitting the clap OT. Um, this is a bit big, okay? Um, if you think a clap OT takes a whole 800 yards, this is what you end up with. So I disliked this guy for a really long time because I couldn't figure out how to wear it. So if you just fold it in half and do the this thing, it's like, it's really too much and you sort of feel like you're choking and I don't know. So then last year when I went to the Pittsburgh Knit and Crochet Festival, I brought it because it was snowing. And then Stephen B showed me this really cool way to wear it. So what you do is you take it, um, oh geez, I'm on the spot. Okay, you take it and you pass them through. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, yeah, this is how you do it. You take them and pass them through. Then you twist it and you pass, that is not how you do it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Sorry, I do have a video of how to actually do it on my website. Oh, you take it and you pass one through, and then you twist it and bring the second one. That's how you do it. Okay, and bring the second one through. And that eliminates a lot of the bulk and makes it look really nice. So now that I know how to wear it, I really, really love my clap OT. Um, it's made from a silk and wool blend. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Louisa Harding's Grace, um, which is really beautiful. And 
now I love this guy. And it's a nice icy blue, like, you know, for winter. Wear him a lot. Even though he's in the middle of the box, he does get warm a lot. This guy I just finished. So this is Stellante um, by Laura Nelkin. And let me just make sure. Yeah, that's the right way. And so this was my first beaded project. And the yarn I dyed, the yarn is Lion Brand 18... 26, 79, whatever their yarn is that's the fingering weight, it's all white. Um, it's the natural color. And then I dyed it with Kool Aid. And um, I used cherry and grape. And so, this you can sort of see the interesting thing about how Kool Aid works is like when you mix cherry and grape, you don't always get like the color that's in the middle that you would expect because it doesn't. It wasn't meant to work like a true dye, um, so it's sort of different from like a jacquard dye in that way, is that you always get, you know, interesting combinations. So this one, I really like, and it's very pretty, and it's beaded, and I'm very proud of my beads. This is my sampler cowl. I really like this guy. So this I designed for um, a craftsy workshop. So I wanted a project like if you knew how to do a single crochet and sort of wanted to learn to read patterns and wanted to like try some new stitches, like what would you do that would help you get those skills? So I designed this um, cowl. It has a simple square that's just like a normally little square. It has a granny square because everyone wants to know how to do a granny square. It has a wave stitch which which uses like a treble crochet and a double crochet and then I talk about seaming and then there's a shell on the outside so I think it's super cute um, it's blue sky alpaca's worsted cotton so I don't wear it too much during the winter because like it's cotton but it's really gorgeous and I love it wearing wearing it for fashion purposes um, you could make it out of a wool and then you would wear it during the winter of course this is oh darn what's the name of this pattern Ooh. It starts with an H. It, the yarn is Kitchen Sink Dye Works. It's a C cell. Um, I have no idea what the pattern's called. That's just how it is sometimes. Anyway, it's pretty. It's cute. You know, it's just a little lacy thing. Um, I think I could have made it a little bit bigger so it wouldn't, you know, it comes undone a little bit, but it's cute. And it's a really nice color. Um, Unfortunately, Kitchen Sinks Dye Works isn't dying anymore, um, so you can't snap up that yarn. Gotta get them while they're hot. <sighs> this, right, okay, let's talk about this. Um, so this is a hat, oh, I'll put it on. This is a hat from um, Modern Top Down Knitting, and it's a really good book, um, and the designs are really beautiful. The downside to the designs is that um, they have a lot of finishing work. So for example, uh, and they're gorgeous, there's a lot of hems that are turned under and little bits of um, fabric taping that are sewn on. And so this hat, well, it's a very, very cute hat, you have to use, you have to knit over pipe cleaners to get the structure of the hat, and the pipe cleaners were really annoying to work with and you can tell if they sit anywhere the pipe cleaners get all bent and so my pipe cleaners got all bent and this is one of those hats that never actually really gets worn but it's sort of too irritating to frog because now there's pipe cleaners stuck in it so this gets a face on Ravelry um, not sure what to do with that one it was a mercantilized cotton which actually was a really good yarn choice for the hat but um, this is a ruffle scarf, it's a church mouse yarns pattern. Um, the yarn is a Claudia, Claudia fingering. Great colors. Um, it's sort of too short to wear like that. Um, I don't wear this one. We'll just all be honest about that. Nice yarn, cute pattern, but um, it's just not my style. Not my stuff. Oh, this one's good. This one's good. Okay. This, besides being one of my favorite colors on the planet. Okay. So this one, this does start with an H. I think it's called Hanako Haruni. Something like that. Um, 
but it, the yarn is candy skein. So Tammy Clockow has a dyeing company and she does the best colors. Like see how bright this is? It's really amazing. Um, you know, the shawl was, you know, a nice knit or whatever, but the yarn is fabulous. Um, so I've gotten some more yarn from her because the colors are really just so great. And I love knitting with them. I'm a color girl, so, you know, this is a really nice little guy. So this is a, well, it's a sort of a citron. Um, the yarn is dyed by um, Ealing. Ooh, I forget what her dyeing company is. So her spinning is Rhino Fluff, and I'm blanking on what her dyeing company is called right now. Sorry. Uh, but it's a really beautiful skein. Um, and the citron, if you've seen it before, it's a half circle. So what I did was just cast on, um, like, I don't know, this many stitches and then work the pattern from there so that I could get like a little shawlette because I only had one skein. Um, I wanted to use it. This would be super cute with like a shawl pin. Um, and this is a silk blend, so it's really nice and it's lace weight, so it's really drapey. So I love that guy. Oh, this is the other thing. Okay, this is the other thing I made with, remember I made the rainbow hand, um, hand spun thing. This is what I made with the other half. So this is called the crocodile stitch. And, um, you know, I crocodile stitched and it's a bonita pattern. And I put the button, you know, so I put these buttons on and I picked funky colored buttons. And it's really cool because the stitch naturally has holes in it. So you can just like button it however which way you want to button it to be warm. You know, you can do it in a circle, like a cowl, or folded like this. So I really love this, and I get lots of compliments. Not just because it's rainbow and really pretty, but also because of the crocodile stitch. And it's really warm. This, hmm, this is a helmet liner. I'm going to totally mess up my hair now. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, dear. Okay, so... Do we get the idea? It's, you know, supposed to go on like that. Oh, this is a disaster. Okay, I'll just talk about it. You know, it's supposed to go on like a helmet liner. Um, it's never really gotten that cold for me to need one of these. Um, I don't know, it just stays there. The color's so pretty though. <laughs> but that's all. This I designed myself. Um, it's too long to be honest. It's too long and too thin. So it's made by, um, oh, sorry, it's made with Patton's Bamboo Silk, which is actually a really nice yarn that I like. Nice and silky, bamboo-y. Um, it's just too long. But it's cute, but it's too long. Oh, there we go. So he doesn't get worn a lot. Um, and I'm sort of on the fence about how I feel about, you know, these summer scarves like I don't end up wearing shawls or scarves too often in the summer, um, even though this is the perfect fabric for it. Um, I think it needs to be a little like prettier than I made this one, um, and not like the wraparound 27 kind, times one. This is really, really great yarn. So this is Shepherd's Wool, um, the crazy skeins. So they're the mill ends from her production. and. I just love the effect. It's self-striping. It's really, really cool. Um, the downside is that, so this is the same Rocka beanie. See how it's not as cute as the other one? Um, I think I just sort of, like I was doing this while I was at Stitches and I was talking to people and I think I work too many repeats. Um, this guy's gonna get frogged. Sorry. It's just too, it's too much. It's too floppy. It needs to be more like the other guy and I just made an oopsie. This hat does not cover my ears. I'm sorry. It's a blue sky alpacas pattern. It's made with techno. The yarn is very nice. The yarn is a silk tube that's fluff injected with alpaca. Very cool. Um, the hat doesn't cover my ears. Big pet peeve of mine, in case you didn't know. This I designed myself also. It's called the pocket cowl. And my idea, oh, it's upside down. Okay, you know, it's like a cowl and has a pocket. Uh, you could wrap it around again, and then you could like, I don't really know. You have a pocket, tie it with a string, 
I love the color. It's um, brown sheep. Um, it's knit in a very long thing and then um, Kitchener, so you don't have to work in the round. It's cute. It's at the bottom of the pile. I don't wear it that often. Um, actually, I probably should wear it more often, but it just doesn't happen. I love this pattern. The pattern is Pagona by Stephen West. I have another one in the same pattern. I don't want to talk about the yarn. I just don't. I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. This hat, I mean, it's a free pattern. It's the basic chunky hat. Um, I got this yarn around the edge the first time I went to Australia and I had to get some possum yarn. I only got one skein of possum yarn because it was the last skein they had and um, so I just used it for an edging. Super cute, super functional hat. I usually forget to wear it in lieu of all of my other hats that I've been making recently. Oh, this guy. This is Spry, so I designed this one. Um, it's made with it's made with Barocco socks. It's a self-striping sock yarn, so it looks like tons and tons of color changes, but it's actually just intarsia segments worked in. This is the fingering weight one, so it's worked in six segments, and the worsted weight one is worked in four segments. So I really like that guy. Cute, stylish. Um. Oh, so I'm passing up a bandana that I didn't make and a shawl I didn't make. Told you, it's just everything in this box. This hat's called L the, L the, L the London Eye, or maybe it's just London. I really love this hat. I wore it for like three weeks straight. Um, when I visited Europe, it's like really funky. I feel like, I don't know why, I feel like these ridges, like, like I'm a person with dreadlocks being super hip and trendy. Um, but I feel really trendy in this hat like it's big and poofy and like in my fantasy world I have all this hair that's like in my hat anyway I really really love this hat um I think it's a bit too long to be honest I don't know I don't really have hair to put in it so it's just sort of like being long um but it stays on my head really well and um I think I just wore it too much and sort of like I topped out on it it might come back but it's a really good hat Okay, that's box one. Is this fun? I don't know, might be a little fun. Okay, I'm gonna rearrange, get box two.